I see the red light. Five, four, three. Hey, Phantom, it's me, Aaron. Drop Force Mike. Tits McGee. And this is a comic show, and it's the first show of the new year, and the issue fives are finally out for DC, and this is the first week, the week that I love the most, because it's action, anal man, and Swamp Thing, this trifecta of Crazy. freaking awesome. Best week of the month. And Action <laughs> 5, uh, it begins again, 2012. It's a new origin, an updated origin for Superman that I actually really like. And I don't think it's over-explaining, because, you know, people are just like, mm -hmm. why, why, why did he build a little rocket ship just big enough for one? <laughs> why did he make one for his whole family? I mean, was he really that miserable as a father <laughs> and a husband that... You know, he's just like, the kid out of you here. know, like, I can't, like, let my kid die, but I don't want to live anymore. <laughs> but anyway, you know, so it explains why I had a rocket ship that was just for one. And with the crypto thing, now, this was... One little person. There was, there was this whole thing about um, crypto, his rocket never made to Earth. There's a lot of stuff at New York Comic Con where people were getting really pissy about mm -hmm. no crypto. And I read issue three of Action, and I said, for a fact, Crypto is in the Phantom Zone, no doubt. I emailed Rich Johnson of Bleeding Cool. He ran a story on it. I called it. He's in the Phantom Zone. I mean, all dogs go to heaven one. I right. remembered that. <laughs> yes. So it's like the Phantom Zone. And when, like, some crazy old homeless lady says she sees a ghost dog, you know, like, yeah. it's, you know, it, it's not, you know, Bill Cosby's dog. It's obviously <laughs> crypto, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, crypto, like, when mon -El was, like, appeared as a ghost or a phantom or mm -hmm. an apparition or the phantom zone, you know, he was in the phantom zone, and crypto's in the phantom zone. So here's the reality of it all. Whenever DC decides to take the stick out of their ass again and do some fun comics, you right. know, give crypto back to Superboy or whatever... He's just in the Phantom Zone. It's only a zone away. You know, yeah. he can he can get him back out. Um, <laughs> now, here's the two horror books. These are the two dark books. It, as I say, you know, I like fun books. I like humor books. I like whatever. I really like the DC dark books. Yeah. I really like that dark corner and that vertigo s stuff. That's the like, horror I can handle. I like that horror other heroes. Stuff. Horror heroes. You got like Swamp it. Thing and you got yeah. Animal Man. And <laughs> You're a horror. Animal Man wraps up the first story arc with issue five, but it leaves the Bakers all in a terrible position. And you see, like, Buddy's face is eaten off, yeah. apparently, by his daughter. Mm. I mean, I know that's a spoiler, but it's on the cover. It's on so. the cover. <laughs> and you no. people that I've been telling since issue one that if you're reading Animal Man, you should be reading Swamp Thing and vice versa. You really should. Oh. I mean, like, he's mentioned by name again in issue five of Animal Man, and the war with the rod on the rod is happening now. It's yeah. happening it's with the issue now. sixes. So 2012. Swamp Thing again was, was, a, <laughs> it was another great it's issue of Swamp world. Thing by um, <laughs> Scott Snyder. And the other thing is, die. they reference all these old Swamp Thing stuff, but you really don't have to know that. If you want to go back and read Alan Moore, I'd suggest it. It's a lot of fun, but don't feel like you have to, and don't feel like you're not getting the meaning of the story because you haven't read that. Because there's a little thing called like mystery and a story unfolding, like a, a rose blooming, you know, mm. that just because you've read all the old Alan Moore doesn't mean you know exactly where Scott right. Snyder's is going, and that's wonderful. Yeah. You don't, ah, you're not, you're not going to have any more insight really having read that, but you would enjoy Alan Moore. Definitely. And, you know, the insight you need is these two books are going together, they're going to fight the rot yeah. together, and it's going to be awesome, and I can't wait. I, I love you, DC. Um, <laughs> Take Rick your Remender. Stick out of your ass. <laughs> Rick Remender, uh, he has made a name for himself ever since he decided he was going to stop trying to do the monster match with Punisher or whatever he was right. doing. He's like, okay, I'm going to take 90s stuff and make it awesome. Because there's a lot of nostalgia, and the concepts can be cool. Right. Venom can be cool, and he made Venom awesome. Yeah. He made X Force yeah. freaking amazing. And now he's working on the Age of Apocalypse universe. And I know you guys, a lot of guys have, you know, nostalgia for it. And I bought it as a kid, too, and I liked those hollow foil crap cool. covers. <laughs> they were terrible, but I liked it, and I liked the, you know, whatever. I but still have mine in bags. <laughs> go back and try to reread it, That's all I'm saying. You know, your nostalgia will be over. But anyway, this 19.1 is Age of Apocalypse Zero. That is what it is. It's launching the book with this issue. And it's freaking awesome. So, I mean, basically, Exterminated, like, it's a superhero team, apparently. I think it's more like a terrorist cell. Yeah. Because Weapon X Wolverine is, like, the power structure, and right. they're taking him down with, like, you know, terrorism. So, you know, it's, it's awesome. It's almost like the boys, but instead of, you know, the world being run by heroes that are less than honest and good, right. the world's run by mutants that are that way. And 
I really dug it. So cool. if you guys are into Age of Apocalypse for nostalgic reasons, or if you're just like Rick Remender's Uncanny X-Force and stuff, willing enough to give him the benefit of the doubt that Age of Apocalypse might be badass by yeah. him, do it. It's I'm good. Down. Or if you want to see what the Mayan calendar was talking about. They were talking about the Age of Apocalypse? Yes. Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Weapon X, uh, Wolverine has one hand. I don't know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I don't even. Okay, Wolverine and X-Men, you got Brian Wood on this. It is a spinoff book. It is not Jason Aaron. You do not have it to read it. Jason Aaron. You do not have to read it to get the Wolverine and the X-Men. However, Quentin is the main character in here, and if, you're, if you dig Brian Wood for his more political stuff, for Channel Zero, for DMZ, for Demo, for whatever, it's kid that wants to smash the state and eat the rich and he wants to burn down the school and it's basically Brian Wood channeling his um, teenage self by his cipher, you know, whatever, uh, Quentin. And SLC punk. <laughs> it was cool. Um, Defenders, well, here's him in a barn. I don't know. Why not? The Defenders, um, I like all the characters, how flawed they are, all their interpersonal stuff. Um, I know it's a book that is all crazy. Some people really like it. Other people are like, what the hell? I don't like any of these characters mm -hmm. and what the hell. But here's the thing. Doctor Strange, Matt Fraction has this voice for Doctor Strange. He's making him the super creeper. He is officially now, he's not the sorcerer supreme anymore, but he is the sexist supreme. He's the <laughs> master of the misogynist arts. Okay. And it's just, yeah. I think you would like him. Yeah. I mean, he's, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, X Sanction, this is like, Cool. A guilty pleasure that isn't even that fun. Um, it is leading into <laughs> it's guilty, but no pleasure. I, I don't know. It's leading into X Men vs Avengers. Dominatrix. All right. X Men vs Avengers could, if it has some kind of heady hook zeitgeist thing, like Civil Liberties versus Security Civil War thing. It could be really phenomenal and recapture the whole Civil War phenomenon mm -hmm. because Civil War essentially was heroes punching each other in the face just with heady stuff behind it. So if X-Men vs. Avengers is that way, awesome. Um, this is not that way. Um, <laughs> if you want to see Iron Man and Cable beat the crap out of each other, mm -hmm. that's cool. Go. It's here. I don't know about the whole Terminator stuff about the Avengers are going to launch Skynet and kill Hope, but <laughs> it might happen. Um, uh, here's my favorite book of the week, The Tao. I think everyone at this table can agree that this book... That was my favorite, too. It's phenomenal. Awesome. I have awesome. to agree with you for once. <laughs> Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips should always work together. They should just get married. They, it's, yeah. it's true. I've loved yeah. everything they've yeah. done. At and least they, a domestic partnership. Yes. Yeah, they basically probably are common law. You yeah, know, they definitely. have to split their assets and everything, yeah. you know? <laughs> Unless they have a prenup. But <laughs> Fatal, it's guns, sex, mobsters, monsters... Uh, a reporter in present day, a ageless woman that might have made a deal with a demon or whatnot. It goes all the way back to 1935. That's awesome. And the mobster demon that she's his kept woman. And uh, just a string of doomed men in that span of time that have tried to save her and failed. Yeah. And is our guy going to do any better? And it's just awesome. It's horror noir. So... I'm down. With it's, the occult stuff, it's awesome. It's good. And, you know, I love his criminal, I love his incognito, but what I love most about these guys, and I guess I'm referring to him as a singular dude, yeah. is that they keep it fresh, they keep it coming. Yes, I want more criminal. Yes, I want more incognito. But, you know, I want this now, too. Yeah. You know, and by the time this is done and they do another incognito or whatnot, I'm going to be all about that. No. So, thank you. Thank you, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. You are... You are phenomenal. And thank you, Image, for doing crazy new stuff and not just X-Men vs. Avengers again like the 80s. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, Ferals by David Lapham is the Avatar book of the week. And if you like David Lapham's Stray Bullets, if you like his Crossed, you'll like then it. Then you'll love it. You'll like it because it's a supernatural crime drama. Yes. And it is gory. It With is gross very gory. werewolves. Well, I mean, what do you want, like, sparkly werewolves? No, they're, they're, they're cross-style werewolves. Yes, and there's <laughs> plenty like of sex. They like to penises and... off and shove it in your mouth. Ooh, that's great. wide bone. Uh, spoiler. <laughs> no, I mean, that's like page no, it's two. Like, yeah, but right off anyway, it's not... if you like Cross, <laughs> and if you like David Lapham, you yeah. like his Caligula, you like his vein of stuff, you will like this, because this is 
still David Lapham doing crazy stuff. And I like that Avatar's given him a chance to do his own thing. It's fun. I it's think, awesome. I think this is my new fetish. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye.